Okay, let's give a detailed example of how to work a convolution problem using the mathematical definition. So big picture, remember that convolution is how to directly compute the output if we're given an input and an impulse response. And we represent this using the notation that the output is equal to the input convolved with the impulse response. The mathematical definition of convolution is the integral. We have to use a W variable of tau of our input x and tau times h of t minus tau d tau. So tau is a dummy variable, it will go away <clears throat> and will be left with just a function of t. So let me give a detailed example. Say we have an input that decays. And it's zero up until t equals two. And at two, it pops up to a value of two. Here's the two out here. And it decays down. It decays down relatively quickly. It's negative. It's time constant is one over this coefficient is one third. So after about time constants, five time constants, or roughly one and a half seconds, um, it's decayed to about 99% of its final value. So this will decay down to about 1% of two or about 0 0.02 after five time constants, which would be five over three, about one and a half seconds. Our impulse response, let's say it looks like a delayed step. Then we can set up our answer. We can find our output is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x of tau times h of t minus tau d tau. That'll be the integral of x of tau. Well, if x of t is this, then x of tau is the exact same. Just every time we see a t, we'll replace it with tau. And we'll multiply it by our h of t. Now this says, that every time we see a t in our impulse function, well, we will replace it with a t minus tau. So that would be u of replacing t with t minus tau, and then minus one, all d tau. So this is where we're gonna use what I call a squares rule that says, if you've got an integral that's got complicated looking step or impulses to it. Get rid of those steps and impulses first by changing around these limits of the integral and then do the integration once you've got the, the simplified limits. So we've got this step and we've got this step. And so I'm firstly going to graph what each of them look like and then what their product look like, looks like. And that will tell me how to change these limits. So let me draw the first part of the step. The first part is u of tau minus two. So I know that it goes to, it's something changes in the step when the argument is zero and the argument is zero when tau is two. So when it's two, something is changing. That's when the argument to the step function is zero. And if my tau is very large, the argument is positive, so the step is one. And if tau is very negative, then the argument to my step function will be negative, and so u of a negative number is zero. So that gives me the first part. Let's graph the second part. Now the second part is a function not only of tau, but also of t. So we're gonna to have to decide some value of t to graph this for. Um, 
I'm going to throw out a simple value of t that kind of makes sense to me. Let's graph it for t equals zero. And we might have to modify that depending upon what we get. When t is zero, we end up getting u of zero minus tau minus one that we want to graph. So we can see that that changes. It's a step that changes when the argument is zero. So it changes at negative one. For very large positive values of tau, this argument becomes negative. So u of a negative number is zero. And for very negative values of tau, the argument becomes positive and the step function of a positive number is one. So it looks like this. And although it does look like this, I think we could see that if we graphed it for a different number, let's say we graphed it for t equals one, it would instead be shifted to the right by one. And if we graphed it for t equals two, it would be shifted to the right by two. So in general, for any number at all, for any value of t at all, this u of t minus tau minus one, it looks like a step that drops down at t minus one. And again, you could see that by asking yourself, for what value is this argument zero? When is, for what values of tau is t minus tau minus one equal to zero? Because that's when it will, of course, when the argument of the step is zero, that's when it, it does its thing. And we're interested in what value of tau since we're, that's our independent variable. And we can solve by pulling tau out to the right and that's equal to tau equals t minus one. So that's where it changes. So I'm going to erase this intermediate step and realize that in general, for any time t, this is what the second part of our integral equation looks like. So now the question is, what does it look like when we multiply them together? Well, as I've graphed it, you can see that one of two things are going to happen and it depends where it falls down. If it falls down to the left of where this goes up, we're going to get nothing. So we're going to have one of two options with this. Either we're going to get no overlap and we'll get no overlap when this is less than this. So whenever t minus one is less than two, we're not going to get any overlap. And it's just a kind of a weird way of saying we can simplify that. If t is less than three, we'll get no overlap. So if we get no overlap, such as is shown for this particular example, there's no overlap. We'll end up getting zeros everywhere when we multiply the first equation by the second equation. When we multiply this portion by this portion, then we will get no overlap in our u of tau minus two times u of t minus tau minus one. There'll be no overlap and our integral when we get that will of course be zero. Another way of just thinking about it is that if t is less than zero, this first step times the second step will give you zero everywhere for all tau. But for t greater than three, you do get overlap. For t greater than three, this will be to the right of this. And when you multiply these things through, you'll see you get zero up until the time that this pops up. So it's gotta be zero in this region because you're gonna be multiply, you're multiplying this top by this bottom. And if this is zero for time less than two, the product has to be zero for time less than two. After that, this is one, but this is gonna drop down at some point and it will drop down at T minus one. And for t greater than three, this right side will be to the right of the two and we'll get some sort of box. And it will be of height since, you know, what height will it be? This is a step, this is a height of one. And this is a step, it has a height of one. 
So one times one will give this a height of one. It's zero out here. And its width will be t minus one minus two. It'll be the right side minus the left side. So it'll have a width of t minus one minus two, which again is a complicated way of just simply saying t minus three. So now the last step is, or rather the next step, is that it means that this integral is one of two things. It's going to be either the integral of 2e to the minus 3 tau times 0 d tau for any values of t less than 3. Since for values of t less than 3, these two things are equal to zero everywhere, that's this zero, or it's equal to this, 2e to the minus 3 tau times this. So this has got, this is defined over three different places. We'd have to integrate this from negative infinity to where this begins at 2 times 0 d tau plus the integral of 2 to t minus 1 of 2 e to the minus 3 tau d tau times 1 in this region plus 2 e to the minus 3 tau times 0 d tau in the region of t minus 1 to infinity. So that picks up all the parts. But we can see, we know that the integral of anything times 0 is just 0. And so now we've got something much simpler. We've got an integral that is either going to be the bottom between 2 and t minus 1 of 2 e to the minus 3 tau d tau, which is true for uh, t greater than 3. Or it's going to be the integral of 0, which is just 0, for t strictly less than 3. And it doesn't matter where we put our equal sign, because at exactly 3, we can consider it either all zero here, which will be multiplying our integral by zero, so our answer is zero, or it'll be a top hat of height one and width zero, and if you multiply one by zero, it's also a area of zero. So we can put our equal sign either side and we'll be correct. So now we can do our integral. The two comes out, this is negative one third, e to the minus 3 tau, and we're going to evaluate that between 2 and t minus 1. Or it's going to be 0 if t is less than 3. So it's equal to this first integral for t greater than 3, or the second integral for t less than 3. So this is going to be minus 2 thirds. The second part evaluates to e to the minus 3 t minus 1 minus e to the minus 3 times 2. Or 0 if t is less than 3. So I'm going to clear off the right side and continue this on. So this is equal to minus 2 thirds. Now just some basic algebra. We've got e to the minus 3t plus 3 minus e to the minus 6. And that's true for t greater than or equal to 3. Or it's equal to 0 for t less than 3. Let's see, I can get rid of that minus sign by flipping the order here. Not much I can do algebraically to simplify it beyond that. But what I can do is change this to a single equation. I can say, what can I multiply this by so that it doesn't change this at all if t is greater than 3? but it multiplies this by a zero, making the whole thing zero if t is less than three. And the answer is a step like this. 
So for t greater than three, this becomes times one, and we get the bottom. And for t less than three, we're multiplying it by the zero, by zero, and we get the top. So this is our answer using calculus. <laughs>